الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار سوى so, الحمد لله You know I was asked the title of the khutbah and really, the title is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the giver of life and death. And the title for a long time is called Three Ayat from Surah Al-Baqarah. And why is it called Three Ayat from Surah Al-Baqarah? Is because a long time ago, a long time ago. And you know, I really like sharing this. A long time ago, I was about 12 years old in my masjid over in Mansfield, Texas. Mansfield Islamic Center. Small center there, okay? Um, there is a speaker, and I don't even think it was Jum'ah, it was just like a talk after, after a prayer or something. And Shaykh Abdul Nasir Jangda, he is giving a talk, and he's standing there and, he, and he's giving a talk, and he, he shares three stories. He shares three stories. Now I've never heard these stories before, and I didn't know where they're from. But much later, when I memorized the Qur'an, I realized that the three stories he shared are three ayat from Surah Al-Baqarah. Each one of them, each story is one ayat. I didn't know. They didn't even say. But he shared these three stories. So you can understand, I'm like sitting you know, in the masjid like this, and Shaykh Abdul Nasir is standing here giving a khutbah, or, give, or giving a speech, and I'm listening to these three stories. So I want to share with you the three stories, the three ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah. And I want to share with you what went through my mind. Right? What went through my mind. So, ever since I was young, I have always been a way that I want to prioritize efficiency, productivity. Right? I, I want to don't. I, I don't want to waste anything. I want to be as as good as possible with the least amount of effort. You know, my mom calls me lazy, I call myself efficient, alhamdulillah. So I say, no, I want to do the best that I can, least amount of effort, I don't want to have to do anything, but I want to get the best I can. So for example, even when I was younger, and I'm going to go play some games, I'm going to go and play some video games, I don't want to waste time going to the restroom and waste time talking to people. No, 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 I want to, I want to be efficient, I want to have the most fun I can in the least amount of time. Right? That, that's just who I am, that's my personality, and it still is to the day. So. This is the background that I'm coming from. What's the best outcome I can get with the least amount of effort, right? And I'm coming with this background and I'm listening to these stories. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Baqarah, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِي حَاجَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ فِي رَبِّهِ أَنْ آتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكِ Have you not seen Ibrahim alayhi salam and the one who argued with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Have you not seen the guy who was arguing with Ibrahim alayhi salam? He was arguing with him about Allah, about his master, about Allah. Allah gave him the kingdom. He is the king. The guy who's arguing, he is the king. And he's arguing with Ibrahim alayhi salam. And he says, إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّيَ الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتِ Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says, my master is the one who gives life and he gives death. So the king, he says, Qala ana uhi wa umid. 
He says, no, I give life and I give death. You understand? And the scholars, they talk about this. Like, how can a person be so arrogant that they think they give life and death? Like, how, how does that even happen? So some of them, they say that the king means that he can bring two prisoners or he can do bring two of his subjects, his civilians. And he can say, one of you die and the other one live. See, I gave life and I gave death. I am the controller of life and death. But that's not what Ibrahim alayhi salam is saying. Ibrahim alayhi salam is saying that Allah is the one who gave birth to you, who gave you life, who caused you to become born, who even began your existence or the very idea of your existence. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who controls your death and where you are and how you die and what moment you die, not only for you and your subjects and your people of your kingdom, but the entire world and every person and everything in it. That is Allah. That's what Ibrahim alayhi salam is trying to tell him. That is Allah, yuhyi wa yumit. He gives life and he gives death. So he says, no. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he doesn't argue with him. He doesn't say, oh well, but you know, your definition of life and death is my definition of life and death. He doesn't say any of that. He says, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says, قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْتِي بِالشَّمْسِ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقِ فَأْتِي بِهَا مِنَ الْمَغْرِبِ So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says, okay, fine. My master is the one who makes the sun come out of the east. Then go ahead and bring it out of the west. If you think you're, you're so powerful and you're so controlling, and you think you're the one who should be worshipped, and you're the one who should be obeyed, then fine, Allah, my master, is the one He makes the sun come out of the east. So go ahead, you make the come, sun come out of the west then. You think you can control life and death? Try controlling the sun. Oh, you can't. فَبُهِتَ الَّذِي كَفَرَ So then the one who was disbelieving, the king, he got lost. He, he lost. He, he, got, he got told. Right? He got burned. Like that, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. He, he got confounded. He, he, couldn't, he couldn't argue against that. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah says, those who are oppressors and wrongdoers, and they're arrogant, and they're not appropriately giving themselves the position they're in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not guide these people. Right? He has this kind of arrogance. So, I'm 12 years old, and I'm listening to this, and I'm thinking, yeah man, that, that, that's kind of true. Right? I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created me. Allah is the one who gave me life. And not only me life, but everyone around me. And He's the one who can take my death. He can take me away when He wants. Right? And like, yeah, really, I don't really have that much control. Like, I can't control the sun. I can't control circumstances. I can't control if my dad loses his job or my, you know, someone passes away in my family or we become poor or we become rich. Like, yeah, it's out of my control. Life is out of my control. Right? The world is out of my control. I can't control a lot of things, but it looks like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can. Interesting. So then, let's listen to the second story. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَوْ كَالَّذِي مَرَّ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ Or, here, here is story number one. But have you seen Ibrahim alayhi salam and the one he was arguing with? Or, have you seen the man he is going around a town? A man is walking and he's going by a town. The town is completely ruined. The town is upside down. The roofs has fallen down. Right? No one is there. It's it's a ghost town. It's completely ruined. The people used to live there, but it's all just, you know, there's nothing there anymore. And the scholars they say that this was actually the city of Jerusalem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. They look at some of the sources. And they say this was the city of Jerusalem. And the city was upside down. And they say that the man who was traveling, his name was Uzair. None of this is in the Quran. The scholars, they take from different sources and the hadith and, and the, the, the Jewish and Christian sources. And they say that he was from Bani Israel. His name was Uzair. He was passing down by this town called Jerusalem. And it was destroyed by a king and it was abandoned and it was in ruins. But it doesn't matter. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you what you need to know. That he's going by a town is completely demolished. He says, How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
gonna bring, bring this back to life. Look at this town, it's gone. No one's even here. Like the buildings are ruined. Like you can't even grow, you know, it's all, it's all messed up. How is even Allah going to bring back this life to this town? فَأَمَاتَهُ اللَّهُ مِئَةَ عَانٍ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes him to die for a hundred years. ثُمَّ بَعْثَ And then Allah raises him up. He brings him back to life. قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to, to the man, to Uzayn, he says, how long have you stayed? قَالَ لَبِثْتُ يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمًا He says, maybe I stayed a day, or maybe I stayed a, a part of a day. Because you know, some of the scholars, they said he, he woke up, it was like early morning or something. And then by the, by the time he, I mean, by the time he remembered, it was early morning. And by the time he woke up, it was like afternoon or something. So he said, maybe, well, you know, maybe I really slept and I slept like half the day, oh my God. Or maybe like it's the next day, I can't believe it. So he's thinking, maybe I stayed a day or a part of a day. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قَالَ بَلْ لَبِثْتَ مِئَةَ عَامٍ He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the man, No, actually, you stayed here for a hundred years. فَانْظُرْ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِكَ وَشَرَابِكَ لَمْ يَتَسَنَّ Look at your food and your drink, it's not gone anywhere. It's exactly the way that it was. And some of the scholars, they said he had like grape juice and some food and stuff. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, your food has not gone bad. It's exactly the way it was. Good. وَانْظُرْ إِلَىٰ حِمَارِكَ وَلِنَجْعَلَكَ آيَةً لِلنَّاسِ And Allah says, look at your donkey. Because the man was traveling with his donkey. And Allah says, look at your donkey. And the scholars, they said, the donkey is completely decomposed. Like the flesh is gone, the blood is gone, the bones are you know disintegrated and so on. And that's what he sees. So he sees food, it's perfectly fine. And he sees a donkey, it's like completely demolished. And he himself died and brought back to life. Allah says, look at the bones, how we raise them and we clothe them with flesh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, we will make you a sign for people. Not only will this be a sign for you, but it will be a sign for people after you too. Like look at us now, we're listening to the story, we're listening to this Qur'an, we're listening to the, the account and the truth of what happened with this man. And the scholars, they said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He recreated Uzayr, He gave him his eyes back first. And he recreated his own body. And he recreated the donkey and he raised the bones the way they were. And he brought the flesh the way it was. And he brought the blood the way it was. And the veins and the, and the vessels and all, and all of the things. Back until the donkey was braying again. Until the donkey was making noise again. And Uzayr, he saw all of that. فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ قَالَ أَعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ and when it became apparent and clear to him, when he saw all of that, then he said, now I know Allah is capable of everything. And the ayah doesn't say, but the, the scholars, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that hundred years brought back the city of Jerusalem. The town was alive again. And so the man, he understood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable and powerful over all things. He controls everything that exists. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when I hear this story, and I'm 12 years old, and I'm thinking, oh man. Like, you know, and you can imagine, like the, the imagination of a 12 year old is just like, you believe it, you see it, it's as if you see it in your, in your mind. Like, oh, that's really happening. What would happen if I actually saw that? Right, and then I'm, I'm believing it. And I'm thinking this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can kill you and bring you back. He can kill the donkey and bring it back. He can raise the bones again. He can make things not die. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so what's gonna happen to me when I die? And my family when they die? And my game when my computer dies? And my, and my, and my things and my money when I die? Right, all of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls it. Like none of it really matters. So then I thought, man, I'm worried about the wrong things. I'm worried about the wrong things. 
If Allah is the one that controls all of this, if Allah is the one that controls life and death, and your existence, and everything's existence, you see, it's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only gives life and death to humans, but also animals and food and things and cities and towns. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls that too. Next story. Next story. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى Ibrahim alayhi salam, oh Ibrahim alayhi salam is back. Now we get to hear another one of his stories. إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says to Allah, Ya Allah, show me how you give life to the dead. قَالَ أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to them, you don't believe? You know what's wrong with you? Like you don't, you don't believe when I tell you that I can do this? You, you have some fault in your belief? But Ibrahim alayhi salam, he says, قَالَ بَلَى Of course I believe. Ya Allah, of course I believe in your power and your ability. But I want it for the satisfaction of my own heart. Right? So Ibrahim alayhi salam is not saying I disbelieve or I deny or I reject. But he's saying no, I want to see it. I want the satisfaction of my heart. Like that I can say yeah, I saw that happen. Right? So Ibrahim alayhi salam wants that. And understand, before Ibrahim alayhi salam was the same one in his argument. He says, my master is the one who controls life and death. You remember? It's the same person. But the same person is now asking Allah, Ya Allah, can you show me? Can you show me that? Right? So what am I thinking? Because you know, the way that I've been, I've always asked questions. I've always asked questions. And I used to ask my mom questions. And my name is Lisan. And you know what that means? It means tongue. And my mom said, your name is tongue. You're asking way too many questions. You're talking too much. We're going to change your name. I said, no, 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 don't change my name. Alhamdulillah, I'll stop asking questions. But I kept on going. And I would ask my mom and my dad questions about Islam, about Allah, about the Prophet and, and, and you know, logical questions, rational questions, questioning everything. And a lot of times they would just say, you know what? We never asked our parents. We never found out. We don't know. You gotta go ask someone else. And that's the answer that I got. And I did go asking someone else. And I did read in the Quran. And I did ask the scholars. Until I found every answer in Islam. And I saw an example of that kind of questioning from Ibrahim alayhi salam here. Because Islam is not a faith that you just close your eyes and it's blind. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he says, عَلَىٰ بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنْ تَبَعَنِ We are eyes open. We believe based on evidence and proof and reason and, and common sense. Right? We're not blind followers. We believe because we think this is the truth. Because we, we, we have the evidence to say yes, we think this is the most likely and absolutely likely. That this is what we're saying is what it is. So to question and to ask, an example has been set in the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam. مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ Ibrahim. Your religion is the religion of your father Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Ibrahim alayhi salam himself, a prophet, a believer, and an arguer in the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give life and death, is asking Allah, Ya Allah, can you show me how you give life and death? And when Allah says, you don't believe? So he says, no, of course I believe, Ya Allah. But I want the satisfaction of my heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قَالَ فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِّنَ الطَّيْرِ فَصُرْهُنَّ إِلَيْكِ ثُمَّ جَعَلَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ جَبَلٍ مِّنْهُنَّ جُزْءًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to Ibrahim alayhi salam, take four birds. Take four birds. And the scholars, they say He actually took four different kinds of birds. So they weren't even like the same kind, like four pigeons, right? There were like four different species of birds, let's say. So that it's easy to see which bird is what kind. And until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, find those four birds and familiarize yourself. Like figure out which bird is which and get to know the bird and see the bird and the marks on the bird and what the bird sounds like, everything. Like get used to the bird. Okay, all four of them, four birds. ثُمَّ جَعَلْ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ جَبَلٍ مِّنْهُنَّ جُزْءَ Then there are multiple mountain tops, right? Like hills. And on each top of the mountain, and if you've seen the hills, they're huge. Right, so what? It takes effort. You don't get to see the, the, the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and you're just chilling, and like it just comes in front of your head. No, no, right? You have to go climb the mountain. You have to 
kill the birds. You have to slaughter the birds, make it into pieces, jumble them all together, then take this pieces and put it over there, and some pieces over there, and some pieces on that mountain, some pieces on top of this hill. Go ahead and do that. Slaughter them, kill them, make pieces of them, mix them together, and go ahead and place on each hilltop a portion of the birds. And some of the scholars, they said Ibrahim alayhi salam, he kept the heads. They said he kept the heads in his hand, four heads in his hand, and the pieces on the mountaintops. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, then call out to those birds. They will come to you running. They will come to you quickly, right? And so the Prophet, the scholars, they say that the, when Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam called out to those birds, he saw the pieces of those birds get back together and become into the birds that they were. And they were headless birds and they came running to him. Right? They came running to him. And he had the heads in his hands. And he would give one head to the wrong bird, it would not take the head. It would only take the head that actually it fit. Its own head. And Ibrahim alayhi salam saw that with his own eyes. By this point, I heard this story, and, by, and I don't even know that it's in the Qur'an. At this point, I heard the story, and I was sold. I was sold. I was like, Allah is the one who can do that. Allah is the one who can do that after your pieces. After you're split into pieces, He can bring you back. He can bring you back. And then it clicked in me, that just like that, He can bring you back after you die. On the Day of Judgment, just like that, He can bring you back, obviously. Obviously, He's the one who raises the sun from the east. He's the one who brings the town back. He's the one who raises a donkey up. He's the one who causes you to die for a hundred years, brings you back. So why can't He make you die for thousands of years and bring you back on the Day of Judgment? He's the one who can put together jumbles of flesh into the birds that they were. And they come back and they become alive. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you remember, I'm trying to be as productive as possible, as efficient as possible. And I thought at that moment that I can devote myself to anything. I can devote myself to playing games. I can devote myself to making money. I can devote myself to my family and the people that I love. I can do all of that. I can spend my time and effort and, all, and I can totally invest in all of those things. But at the end of the day, they're all going to die. They're all going to go away. And the only one that controls that death, and that life, and that existence, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I better invest in Him. I better strive for Him. I better please Him. I better make sure my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the controller of life and death, I better make sure that's good. And at that moment, I decided, that's it. I have the answer. The most efficient thing to do, the most productive thing to do, the best return on my effort is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. It's Allah. It's not anyone else. It's not anything else. And yeah, you know, like you still gotta live your life. You're still a kid. But direction, direction, goal, path that I want to take, that's Allah, that's Allah. There's been a lot of ups and downs after that, you know, but that was the turning point for me. That was the turning point for me. Before that, I wasn't, I was praying but my parents were telling me to pray. I was fasting but my parents were telling me to fast. But that moment I said, man, I'm messing about. Like I need to work, I need to worry about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I started digging deep. Reading the Qur'an, learning the Qur'an, asking questions, questioning religion, what's the right religion, what's the right faith, asking questions left and right, until I found every answer in Islam. And later, at 16 years old, Alhamdulillah, I found a friend. I made dua for a friend, and the friend, he told me, why don't you, make, why don't you memorize the Qur'an? And I, then I memorized the Qur'an, and I learned what it, the Qur'an said. And Alhamdulillah, we are where we are now. But you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes He chose, chooses people and He places them in, 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 in a position, in a situation where they hear what Allah wants them to hear. Right? 
They hear what Allah wants. I could have been in that masjid and instead of being in the masjid, instead of my father taking me to the masjid that day, I could have been somewhere else. And I wouldn't have heard that. And who knows if I would be standing here with you right now. But it's from the guidance and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are who we are the way we are. Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana lihada. Thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praise Him subhanahu wa ta'ala that He guided us to this faith, to this belief. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sa'ili muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. So Alhamdulillah, well, I've shared a number of things with you. Basically the story of my life, Alhamdulillah. But really, the three ayats from Surah Al-Baqarah. That these three ayats and the three stories that I heard in that masjid from Shaykh Abdul Nasir, right, changed my life. They changed my life. And only later when I was memorizing Surah Al-Baqarah, I found out they were in the Qur'an. So look at the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He teaches us this. We could not have known ourselves. We could not have trusted this story, right? If you, if you, if you put this story in a movie, people would be like, oh man, that, that, that's crazy. Who's gonna believe that? <laughs> but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it happen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us in a place where we can trust his Prophet ﷺ, we can trust this Qur'an. And we know that Allah is the one, He has the power and He has the ability. He is the one who gives life and death. And He is the one subhanahu wa ta'ala who guides. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who worship Him, who believe in Him, who give Him the level that He is at subhanahu wa ta'ala, who honor Him in the way that He should be honored and respected and believed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us life and that He gives us the best of deaths. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He raises us on the day of judgment, believers in Him and His power, His ability to give life and death. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to orient our lives, to invest in Him, to believe in Him, to follow Him, to obey Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, to follow the path of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we dedicate our lives, our efforts, our minutes and our hours and our seconds and our days and years of our life to His worship subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's the best payoff. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the best of those rewards. رَبَّنَا وَآتِنَا مَا وَعَدْتَنَا عَلَىٰ رُسُلِكَ وَلَا تُخْزِنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Ya Allah, give us the, what You promised to Your messengers and don't disgrace, disgrace us on the Day of Judgment. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Rabbana wa atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Wahdina wahdi ahlina wahdi dhuriyatina ya Rabbil Alameen ya Arhama al-Rahimeen. Allahumma Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-Sami' al-Alim. Wa tub alayna ya Mawlana innaka anta al-Tawab al-Rahim. Wa salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Shafi'ina wa Mawlana Muhammadin sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم واتقوه يجعل لكم من أمركم مخرجا واقم الصلاة